Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surfboard review is on the HT2 by SharpEye Surfboards. Now the HT stands for Holy Toledo. This is new for 2018. It's a high performance board, and it was designed more or less for Philippe Toledo for surfing a wave like lower trestles. He did win the 2017 Hurley event on it, so I was super excited to get my hands on this board. This is gonna be a fun review, so sit back, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Now, as we dive into the attributes of this board, I wanna pause first and just say, I remember Philippe winning the Hurley event last year, and looking at the board, the kind of speed he's carrying, and it's really hard to like see Philippe surf and, and imagine myself on a board, because he's at such a high level, and he's one of my favorite surfers, but when I saw the the board and the attributes how it's got really flat rocker under the belly here it's got medium kick in the nose and a low continuous rocker i'm thinking those are some of the attributes that i like in some of my favorite boards for me that flat rocker under the belly that's going to help me get through flat spots think about where i surf there's times where it's real steep and there's other times it's sloping meaning flat so when i get a lot of speed and i come off the bottom it's always a surprise. Sometimes I know I'm gonna have a section to hit and sometimes I have to take that speed and do a big wrap. Well, this flat rocker right here, that's gonna give me the speed to be able to make the change if whatever the wave's presenting for me. And that's what it felt like under my feet. I felt like I had a lot of speed on this. This board also liked to be on rail. And when I'm talking about rails, like I felt like I can hold bottom turns for a long period of time and then go into check the section out and hit the turn. One of the things about what, what was going on when we were surfing for the almost the whole week or time that we were shooting on this board, the waves were kind of wonky. What I mean by that is like it was doing this the whole time. It might have been sheet glass and we had overhead surf and it looks fun on video, but what you can't see is the two different swell directions in the water making it hard to keep the rail in the water. Now we all know that EPS foam is more buoyant and so when it gets more buoyant, it's hard to get that rail to settle down. I wrote it in choppy textured surf, and I wrote it in bigger surf at really high speeds, and the board held in really, really good, which is kind of odd, and I'll tell you why. We have EPS foam, like we said, it's more buoyant, and we've got a low exit rocker, but it's continuous, and the way Marcio did this tail, I felt like it could hold in and give me the performance I was looking for off the bottom and in the pocket. Now I mentioned speed, rocker, hold, and as I look at and talk about the rail, it's a full rail. So he's giving you the foam you need, especially for you know smaller waves to like six foot, and that's kind of where this board was designed. But we can't just rely on rocker for our speed and control. We have to look at his concave, and this board's really simple. It's got a moderate single running all the way through the tail, and you can see the tail design here, it's got a decent amount of surface area, not super pulled in, but it's still got that performance I'm looking for. And with the surface area, it's giving me that lift and giving me a ton of drive. And that's one of the things I noticed about this board. It didn't matter if it was choppy, if it was bumpy and hard to surf, I always had the drive that I needed and the speed in and out of turns to do what I wanted to do. So let's look at some waves together. First turn, good spray but it's about setting up this rail turn. Got wonky, board held in there, that felt great. Now this wave, just a ton of speed. I come off the bottom and the board throws me in the air. I wasn't even expecting or trying to do that. And then this wave, a lot of texture on the surface, but the board had good snap and it held in good. Here's a good clean face. Look at, the wave goes flat, but the board's got this incredible drive through the turns. Now right here, look at the wonk but able to stick the rail in the water and the board held in really well. And then this wave, first turn felt pretty good. I'm waiting for the wave to get steep so I can hammer a really sick turn and it never really happened, but the board had great flow and still felt really alive under my feet so I can finish the wave well. Now that we've looked at some waves together, I think it's appropriate that we talk about the construction. We saw the swell, there was a combination of a southwest and a northwest, and it was a bit jumbled. Even though some of the mornings were clean, it was hard to surf out there. And if I had the option, maybe had this board in two different constructions, typically I'd grab a PU over the EPS because these are so buoyant. But I'm getting used to riding EPS, 
and it didn't feel like it had a lot of chatter. And I like that extra added speed and float when paddling. So I really feel like I'm getting used to these constructions. But this one, SharpEye is calling E2. Now this is a two pound stringerless EPS foam core. I wanna start first with durability. I rode this board for well over a week, two to three hour sessions, and I'm pretty hard on the deck of boards. All pressure dent, a PU pretty bad. But let's set a scale. A scale of one to 10, 10, when I say something to 10, that means it has no pressure dents on the deck at all. A one would be, it fell apart on the first session. Well, I would give this probably about a seven. There are pressure dents here, but the durability is good. Now, let's say I'm riding a PU with roughly the same light glass job, I would probably give it a five. So that kind of sets a gauge on where the durability is at. Now we got to talk about flex and feel. Since it has no stringer, they're getting the flex pop memory back and forth at a carbon tape that's on top and bottom. And I would say that the tape on the top stops about right here and it's the same on the bottom and that's where this is loading and unloading. And I could definitely feel it in and out of turns. But the other thing that I want to mention is the biaxial glass that they're laying. They're doing it in 45 and negative 45 as opposed to zero and 90. And that's just going to reduce the ability for the board to buckle. And then they have a nylon stitch on the glass and that kind of just holds it all together. And I would say, look, there's a lot of different variations that all these manufacturers are coming up with. They're doing a great job. I really like EPS, I like the new constructions, and I think that as I get used to it, I even like it in the four to six foot surf. So my fin choice for this board was pretty simple. After speaking with Marcio, he designed this model with Philippe's fin in mind. Now I've tested Philippe's fin in the past, and I really like it. So I put him in for the entire review, and I never changed him. And what I like about him, is there a relatively neutral fin. And what I mean by that is it has a good amount of sweep for tight turns in the pocket, and it's a bit upright so I can pivot quick. And that's exactly how it felt. I felt like it complemented the board well. I could surf it quick, or I could draw my turns and carve. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that this is a performance core fin, but it's also the lightest fin in the FCS2 range. So I feel like I can push harder on these than let's say the Kalohe and Dinos. Well, you say, well, they're both the same performance core, so how could you say you feel like it's stiffer or you can push harder? Well, they're not the same weight. Since it's lighter, there's something different about this construction, and I really like this fin in three to six foot surf, and you put it in a board like this, you can really get it to do all the things that you want it to do. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review. Hats off to Marcio for making a great daily driver. This board was really fun and three to six foot surf. If I could say any one thing is I wish we could have tested the PU in the type of waves that we had, we could have really seen how this E2 construction would compare to the PU when you put it on rail. But for the most part, I had a blast. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. You can also find us at surfandshow.com or on Instagram at Surf and Show. And special shout out thanks to Marcy and the folks at Sharp Eye for sending this board down for review. That's it for today. Until next time, see you in the water. Bye-bye.